Hey, what's up, fellas? Spilling the beans for Don today. We got to show him exactly how we got this thing working. And what we're looking at here is our flame catch. This little setup here catches that fireball, especially during the process of ignition, and keeps it from just blowing right out the front end there. Without this catch in here, this flame catch or flame holder, we would not be able to sustain the ignition combustion that we're looking at. So we are using a brake rotor to not only act as a heat retention um, battery to kind of store heat from the fireball to help vaporize that fuel better, but it's also acting as a flame holder for the nucleus of the combustion there. So very important that we have that. That's sitting on top of a fuel tray. And what we can see here is a pressure up event. Now, the size of that cyclone fire is pretty important. You see here, we're about to blow the lid off of this thing. And the reason why we don't want to do a standard setup, you see how that lid just flew off? If we were running at that kind of pressure, the fuel will not flow into the combustion chamber without a pump. And because you want to run without a fuel pump, Don, we got to keep this cyclone burning just the way we see it right here so that we have no pressure inside the combustion chamber. Otherwise, the fuel may not pump right and you'll get some pulsation. The reason why we were able to achieve what I said couldn't happen in that particular clip is because a reservoir of unburnt fuel had built up in the fuel tray, enabling a flash combustion event. So the size of that discharge port is what creates the size of the vortex, and we don't want to go much smaller. But you see there, the heat retention factor, how hot that thing is? That's what we want and need to get that fuel vaporizing without an atomizer nozzle. That is acting as the atomization system right there. So that is our heat battery that was made from a brake rotor. All right, fellas. So this is what we got dimension-wise. One thing to keep in mind, the size of this discharge tube tends to dictate the size of the vortex fireball. If we were to make this smaller, the entire combustion chamber would turn into a big fireball, like kind of like a cyclone combustion chamber. We don't really want that. You can do that, you can try that if you want, but what it will do is make the combustion chamber glow red hot, kind of like we've seen in the testing and the device does pressure up just a little bit. So it's kind of uh, something you guys might wanna test. If you don't like the, um, the way it works with this large hole, you can make the hole half this size and all of the combustion will take place inside of the combustion chamber. You see here how we're burnt? That would not have happened had the combustion not taken place inside. This area here is completely protected because the fireball only burns the diameter of this hole all the way down to the bottom of the combustion chamber. However, when I turned the fuel up and overran the system, we were able to get the fireball to burn inside of this, which would indicate simply lowering or, or making the hole smaller would also do the same thing on less fuel. But that's gonna cause other problems with having a red hot combustion chamber on the back of your setup. So it'll burn it up over time fairly quickly in some cases. With a stainless steel beer keg, you'll be okay. But um, just wanted to, to mention that. The size of this hole right now is about eight and a half inches. And that is the exact diameter of the fireball that gave us six gallons an hour in the testing that we did. Now, and inside of this thing, we wanted something to capture some heat. We didn't want all the heat to just be removed by the blower. So we added some metal we had laying around. And in my case, I had this old brake rotor that I threw in there upside down, knowing that it would capture heat. And we also wanted a fuel pan because we didn't want the fuel to just get dashed around in the cold air and cooled off, it won't burn. The turbulence exceeds the flame velocity of diesel fuel. So you're just gonna have fuel slashing around the bottom. So we incorporated the fuel pan. However, in this particular case, the fuel pan was aluminum and it melted and we ended up burning a hole in it. But nonetheless, that's pretty much 
why the fuel pan was incorporated because the fuel rod, which was entered through this hole, which was just a 3 8 tube. So there's nothing special about that. And it just went right into our pan here, which we burn a hole in. Because this is made out of aluminum. So you guys would want to make some type of steel pan. I would cut an old metal bucket in half if I were you. Try and find a bucket or some kind of steel container. It's going to have to be steel or you can buy one of those small beer kegs and fit it inside of the bigger beer keg that you guys got. They've got like a, a little pot belly keg in some places that's about that big. The diameter of this is about 10 inches. So the fuel was dumping directly in the front of this hole here. And it probably wouldn't help to have a couple of little air holes cut in this thing, but this part gets red hot. And that helps vaporize the fuel and definitely helps keep the flame burning properly. The flame burns from this inner cone, from the vaporizing gases coming out of there, up to the top of that hole and it burns as a column fireball. It does not go past this column area. See how we have this black soot here? That's kind of where the fireball was burning actually. Now that I think about it, I bet you it's about the same size as this. Pretty close. Isn't that neat? The size of this hole at the top dictated the size of the fireball all the way up. So that's pretty much how simple that was guys. We have something to retain heat. It can literally be anything. It just has to be thick metal. And you need a fuel pan to keep fuel from getting into an area where it won't combust and just builds up. And eventually, who knows what could happen to it. You could get over flaming. When the excess fuel does ignite, it can start pushing smoke out of the system. We don't want to be blowing smoke all over these um, blueberries. So this has to be 100% combustion. So that's what the secondary air is for. I have a diagram over here that, um, as, you, as you can see, I've added a valve. This represents the uh, PTO blower. We're gonna want a valve on this so we can control the air for the purpose of ignition and everything. We don't want the air on full power when we go to ignite this thing. And it would just be so much easier to throttle the system. We have primary air coming in the bottom. We would then put another top shroud over this unit that was not shown in the test. This top shroud would look like this and would have secondary air blowing in, spinning the fireball in the same direction as the primary air. So it's important that these two tangents, you see we're on the right side here and the right side here. That's the top or bottom view of this right here, these two pipe connections must be on the same side to keep that spiral vortex going the same way. Otherwise, you'll have some undesirable turbulence and this will help burn off any of that excess carbon that's coming out of the top due to the lack of oxygen down in here. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, I definitely recommend this valve though. That'll let us ignite the thing a little easier. Sometimes when you go to ignite a system, you need less air than you do when you're running the, the unit. So that's why I'm recommending we add a valve that was not shown in your diagram, Don. You could also take a propane tank and chop it like right here as your fuel pan. Anything that's steel is going to work for that. So just kind of a thought. Um, and as far as the brake rotor goes... I don't know if you guys would be able to score a brake rotor like this or not. This particular one's off a sports car, but it worked beautifully. And um, I didn't realize this before, but you see these holes right here? These bad boys were actually carrying air into the bottom of our boiler pot. So this thing was a little bit more high performance than I actually thought it was. That is really cool. So that kind of escaped me, but uh, that's how we ended up getting so hot to do all that, for sure. That air was coming through these little 
passageways right here. That's so neat. I did not catch that when we first started. So that's kind of what you guys got to find, you know, something similar to that. It doesn't have to be just like that, but that definitely worked out absolutely amazing. All right, I'm babbling at this point. Let's get this diagram down the road, guys. I'm going to send this video to you right away. I still got to do a little bit more toiling with the diagram on the dimensions and stuff. So that's headed to you. This video, though, should give you one heck of a start as far as what type of spare parts you're going to want to test out and all that good stuff. And as far as lighting this thing, I just used a propane torch. Got a little fire going inside. So you might want to add an access of some kind like um, what I would recommend is you take a piece of steel pipe okay you could probably just use a cap this small but if you've got some kind of cap I'm making a freaking mess here if you've got a cap like that laying around in a piece of pipe you could just add a bung to the side of the unit so after you get it lit you can just screw the cap back on, and that'll give you a good sealed doorway. That's what I recommend for a door. Either a cap this big, or it doesn't have to be that big. Something like this is big enough for a propane torch to stick down in there, so. I would put that like right here. Say this is just a small piece of pipe sticking off. And then you've got, I'm drawing with the wrong hand here, bear with me. And then you just screw that cap off. Stick the blowtorch in, get some fire blowing in there on the fuel. The fuel kind of rests in the bottom of this pan, obviously. And it gets to boiling like crazy once this thing heats up. So, there you have it, Don. Okay, so we are, quick walk through. Eight and a half inches is the diameter of the discharge port. Total diameter of the setup is... 17 and a half inches this combustion chamber is approximately two foot tall right at 23 inches we're 13 inches diameter on this rotor that's just our heat capture that kind of captures some of the heat from that fireball and keeps everything hot down here on our fuel pan which is 10 inches and about four inches deep. We were using a two inch diameter stainless steel tube for the intake port. And I gotta tell you, that seemed like it was lacking a little bit. The blower we used. This blower was inadequate. It did not have enough power to do the job, but it did have enough power to perform the experiment to show you guys how to build this thing. 